Morning all, how you doing? Recording this for your viewing on Saturday while you're watching this. I may be doing my shopping, maybe putting my shopping away, possibly eating what I've just bought from the shop. That's more likely. I'm sure, I don't know why I'm puffing my cheeks. I, it's normal, isn't it? Look, it's showing. I can't even blame lockdown. I've been at work. I can't even pretend I've been locked up inside. Anyway, greed. It's not greed, it's just I like food, but let's call it greed because that's part of today's theme about this mess, because what a mess it is, the Jeremy and Gakia situation, blimey. Anyway, I'm not here to talk about that in particular. Well, I'm gonna talk about it a little bit, because it goes into what I wanna discuss, and there's two things. Don't know why I'm doing that, that's four, there's two things. Um, so yesterday, myself and Gonzo reacted to it, and to be honest, my opinion hasn't changed too much from that, which is disappointment. And um, there's no anger, I'll tell you why in a minute. Um, and then later on, X sort of, Put out, tried to put out the other side because we've got one side of the story which was the, the club side through Clout and Hugh big part of today's video um, and then X said well no he's not been offered a big deal he's been offered an extension to his scholarship which is about £1,200 a week now I know you're thinking oh, that's alright I know that but he wanted a better contract he wanted a contract that would reflect the fact that he has played first team minutes and th now it depends where you read it some would say he wants one that reflects him as a first team player and some suggest it's just the fact that he has now played in the first team he's now part of the first team squad depends where you read what you listen to as to what the narrative is big point again that we'll get on to it and then later on Clarence who did another article which um told us the contract offer and this is part a of the video there's a part b which is later on it's disgusting i hate it i absolutely hate it and um, when we did a cup of tea uh, three weeks ago maybe we spoke about this and i said that i expected this to get fixed and i said that what you think whether ngaki is right or wrong to reject the contract depends on what the offer is but we didn't know what the offer is and that was a good thing and i joked in there that all we had to do was wait and sean who writes for clary and hugh and well he basically leaked the declan rice's contract offer when when that one was rumbling on so I made a joke, and uh, it's come reality. Now, Sean never leaked it himself. It was Hugh this time, but it was all Clara and Hugh. Put up the details that they've clearly got from the club. £5,000 a week. Um, and it goes up after 10 appearances, up by after 15 appearances. It doesn't say how much it goes up by. It could be a pound. It could be a grand. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't say that. But this is part of the reason. I think if you're going to put up the whole contract, you've almost got to put up all of it for transparency you can't put up bits of it you're putting up the bit that looks good you know um is there a 50 percent relegation release clause i imagine there is because everybody has that in a contract at west ham why would ngaki be any different but it doesn't say that on the article does it no all it talks about is the good stuff he's been offered five grand a week and 10 grand or 10 to 15 grand for every appearance it's a to start but 10 to 15 is a big discrepancy Five thousand is a big discrepancy it's literally you're missing off what, up to a third of the bonus that's a big part to miss out so if you're going to do it do it properly so well actually don't do it at all because i think it's disgusting to release this kind of stuff it's very harsh on ngakia now the club the initial article which is what me and gonzo reacted to which was ngakia has rejected the deal and will be leaving i understand why the club's done that I'm not saying i necessarily agree but i understand because someone's going to get their side out first and the club made sure they were first they control the narrative, which is we've put in a fair offer, it's been rejected, Gaki's leaving, we are disappointed. So what they're wanting to, people to do, you and I, fans, they're wanting us to side with the club, blaming Gakia. And a lot of people did. A lot of people have done that. Now, I'm not saying you're wrong to do that, by the way. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, just, just wait with me. Bear with me here. Now, they, they were wanting to control the narrative. Now, X came out and gave, sort of touched on the other side, saying, well, the Daily Mail claim and Gaki wants 20 grand a week. X has said it's not that much. He hasn't, X hasn't said how much he's wanting, but it's more than 1,200 and less than 20. There's a big big gap there. He's in there somewhere. That's what he's wanting. Um, and he still insists that Gaki hasn't agreed to join another club yet. So we don't know. It's, it's all a mess. But Hugh's one is very precise as to what he's been offered. And I... I hate this more than anything. In Gaki and the club situation, right? I think the five thousand a week, I think it's a fair offer. I don't think it's necessarily a bad offer from the club. But we shouldn't know about this. 
it's bad. It's really, it's horrible. It's, it's really nasty, actually. We're completely throwing Gaki under the bus. Um, even if Gaki does end up staying, there's going to be a bit of a not a sour taste, but it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard for Gaki to want to stay at West Ham now, um, because this is having an impact on youngsters at West Ham. And I can't say that for a fact, but it's, it's something that's been I've been told before, and I've been told again since all this is blown up that there's youngsters at West Ham are a bit unhappy with the way a club leaks stuff like this. They they don't like it, and it's put them off if you like being at West Ham. And, and this is a serious problem. It's something that we need to stop. The board need to stop doing this. And to be honest with you, Clarence here shouldn't put this out. Even if the board did give them the information, the only reason they get that is to put it out so that Ngaki looks like the bad apple in this, and fans side with the club and turn against Ngaki. And it's worked. Reading social media, it has worked. Reading comments on yesterday's video, it has worked. Not everybody, not everybody. I'd say it's maybe 50-50. But it's working. The club have done what they wanted to do, what they intended to do, which is control the narrative and make Jamie and Gaki look like the bad person. But the bad person here is the whoever is telling Clive and Hugh all this information. That's the bad person. It's not Ngakia. It's not. The contract offer is not a bad contract offer. I'm disappointed that this hasn't been sorted. I'm disappointed in Jamie and I'm disappointed in the club because while he's not an established right back, he was our current right back on merit. The, the last game we played, and Zabaleta was fit, Ben Johnson was fit, and Gakia still started. He started on merit. He now had that shirt. Would he have kept it? I'm not convinced. I think Moyes would have still went back to Ryan Fredericks when he was fit. However, Ngaki was very much starting at right back because of his performances. Now, whether you get in the team because of an injury, that's fair enough. Everybody, A lot of people get into teams because of opportunities, but when you take it, that changes the game completely. You are now in there on your own performances. So I'm disappointed in the club and I'm disappointed in Gakia that this contract situation hasn't been resolved. I'm not angry at either of them. I'm not angry at the club for the contract offer. Like I said, I think it's a fair contract offer. I'm not angry at Jeremy and Gakia because I think he could probably be deserving of a little bit more, truth be told. And this is where point B comes in. But I'm very angry at the fact that this has got leaked. That is disgusting. It shouldn't be happening in any workplace. No, not just football, any workplace. Anyway, calm, Gio, calm. Think of the food you're going to buy from the shop. Mm. Anyway, chilled out now. Point B of the video is the academy. We are in danger of losing a couple of other youngsters at the club. They're, they're both 16, but they're being sort of tapped up, I guess, by other clubs. One of them has apparently told West Ham that um, he wants to leave. He wants out. Now, these players are looking for two things. One of two things. A, uh, a better club, because they are being linked to the likes of Manchester United, Bayern Munich, so they're considered to be, you know, on their way to making it in football. Uh, so we had this problem with Kai Corbett as well earlier on the season, so we're struggling to keep a hold of our 16, 17-year-olds at the minute that are tip for good things. And B, money. Money. I'm not saying it's right footballers at that age is motivated by cash. But I can understand it because their counterparts at other clubs, where they, when they meet up for their internationals at um, that age level and whatnot, they might see other players same age at another club get paid more. They might do. Um, and they might want it. They might want quick success because money makes the world go round. Whether you agree with it or not is, is irrelevant, I think, because, well, you have to agree with me. This is my opinion. My opinion is money is a massive, massive factor in a youngster's decision as to which club he's going to join and which club he's going to stay at now and there's two factors here when you're 16 17 there's two factors it money's one the second one is a path into the first team can i get into the first team of this football club i actually think west ham are doing all right for that one we've given Declan Rice an opportunity we've given uh, Dean Ghana an opportunity we've given Ngakia an opportunity ben johnson's had brief spells in the first team but the point is we are showing these youngsters we will give you a chance. So um, our manager, David Moyes, he has got a, a history, if you like, of giving youngsters an opportunity in the Premier League as well. So if you were at, at 16, 17 years old, you're looking at West Ham from that perspective only, it's probably pretty attractive. You think, all right, they give their, you, you, I might get a chance there. The manager will give me a chance. I'm not Moyes' biggest fan, but I will not deny that he's good with the youngsters and when he speaks about wanting to bring the youngsters through, I do believe that. I do believe he wants to bring the youngsters through. 
So we've ticked that box. The second box is the cash. Well, there's a third one, which is how you get treated by the, 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 the board if you don't like the contract offer, but I've discussed that. But the, the V one, the money one. I feel like we need to start gambling a little bit. Now, am I suggesting we're giving Gaki 30, 40,000 a week? No, I'm not, okay? I'm not suggesting that. But the Reese Oxford is the famous player here because this is probably why Ngaki is struggling to get a contract that he wants. This is why Declan Rice struggled to get the contract he wanted. It's because of the Reese Oxford thing. They had their fingers burnt. Reese looked fantastic, 16 years old. Wow, here we go. Next best thing. Um, 20 grand a week, there you are. And then it all went downhill from there on in, didn't it? He, he, his attitude, um, his performances on the pitch, not that he had many, but when he was on, he didn't quite live up to expectations. Um, and we ended up struggling to sell him. But when we did sell him, we got a fee for him. I should have done my sums before doing this video, actually, but I wouldn't be surprised if the fee we got more than covered his wages from when he signed that 20 grand a week deal. From then on, from then to leaving, and you take the fee we got from Augsburg, I bet you the fee covered it. Bear in mind, we loaned them out as well, and when you loan players out, you don't pay 100% of their wages. Um, how much it is, I don't know, let's just say 50-50. So we're only paying 10 a week anyway. I think we have to do more of that. We need to do more Reese Oxfords. And I know you're thinking, whoa, we can't chuck money about. But I'm not saying we chuck it out everyone. How many players come from your academy and make an appearance in the first team every season? Two? At the most? One? Sometimes none? So... I feel we should be rewarding these players for, not for what they've done, but what they could do. And I know you're not really, a reward is for something that you have done, but it's more, you're gambling on their potential. That's what you're doing. You're investing in that player's potential. But if it doesn't work out, there's still a good chance you can sell them for a fee. What's Ngakia worth today? A million? I think that's a fair price if you were to sell him to a championship club. Um, going by what you've shown, he's shown so far, you'd have to say that it would be a, worth a punt for a championship club that's got a million pounds spent on the right back. Um, you can play right wing as well. So if he's worth a million, why would you not tie him down for two or three years on 10, 15 grand a week? And then if it doesn't work out, you, you try and sell him. He won't be worth a million then, obviously. It's not worked out. But the fee you get would cover it. But every now and again, and I do mean every now and again, this is 5% chance you will get someone that makes it. And I don't mean that Rice level, because that's rare. But I mean Dean Gana level. Someone that comes in and looks good. He can hold his own. He's well. He's worthy of a space in the squad. If we were to sell Dean Gana today, if before the virus stuff, if we were to sell Dean Gana, what would we get for him? 10 million maybe? He's been tipped for 10 million to West Brom this summer. Wow. It's 10 million for someone that's cost you nothing. And when we're d dishing out contracts to players like Sanchez on 70 grand a week, I find it hard to stomach that we wouldn't give four youngsters 10, 15,000 a week instead. I'd much rather see that. I'd much rather see us investing, gambling on the potential. Players that we've had at the club for three, four, five seasons, we've watched them develop, we're, we've seen them in the 23s, we're now thinking they've got an opportunity. I'm not saying we gamble on them all, just the ones we think will have a good shot of making it in that first team. I want to see us invest more because at the minute, I, I believe there's a an opportunity for a Premier League club to really stamp them down as the club to play for when you're 16, 17 years old. I want to go to West Ham because A, you get the path into first team and B, I'm not going to admit this, but B, they pay their youngsters. You make enough money out there. Haxbanovic is on 20 grand a week or something. Will we ever see him? Not sure. But we gambled on him. I know he's part of the Marko and Avic deal, blah, blah, blah. But we gambled on him. It's not going to work out. He's been tipped with a 5 3 move. I don't think he's worth that. But we'll get money. Samuelson is another one. We gambled. Didn't work out fine. But if it does, you're going to save yourself tens of millions. And this is the thing with Ngaki, I think, has annoyed me a bit. Because he could be worth a little bit more. I don't know. Like I said, I did a video a couple of weeks ago, the Unpopular Opinions one, and Ngaki, I think, come up. And I said, I don't think he's a first-team right-back yet. But I think he's got potential. I was looking forward to seeing if he could live up to his promise of what we've seen so far. And if he does, amazing. If not, don't worry about it. We gave it a go. He gave it a go. He's not good enough. It happens. We move on to the next one. We give Ben Johnson a shot. We give... The next player is shot in centre midfield, whatever. 
Um, it's just frustrating. But anyway, the main point of this video was, I cannot believe we leaked this contract offer, this contract offer for Ngakia. It's horrible. There's more to come on this, I can promise you that, because there's Jeremy Ngakia's side, which is not the same as what we're being told from Claren Hugh. So there's more to come, unfortunately. It's not gonna get any clearer. Anyway, I'm going to shop and um, see what I'm gonna eat to keep these cheeks getting puffy. Greed, greed. It's in my house and it is in football, unfortunately. And we can't get rid of that. We can't ignore it, the greed factor. If anything, I think we need to accept it. And, and almost, not feed it, just acknowledge it and go along with it and reward some players and hope one of them makes it big. Declan Rice, if we saw them today, would pay for the whole academy for the last few years and the next few years. One player, that's all it takes. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, just like and subscribe if you're around here. And I shall see you tomorrow morning. I might have a little guest on with me tomorrow morning as well. Maybe. I'll see you then.